and welcome back. So last time, we built that sampler skiff out of the 1010 Music Spit Box. And today, we're going to be test driving it, see what kind of uh, cool sounds we can get out of it. We'll see. I took some time to custom record some instruments that I own. My skill levels vary from um, uh, pretty good. A woodwind player and, and keyboard player uh, to uh, a complete noob when it comes to uh, cello because uh, actually I don't know how to play the cello but it was just an opportunity to get some raw and and organic samples into the box and it's always a lot of fun sometimes again not the best performance or anything like that but you know if you practice a little bit with the tools that are available uh, you can get some pretty good uh, convincing recording, especially for something like this. And it's always just a good trend to record because every time you record, every time you use a new mic, a new preamp, a new plugin, you're learning something new. And so if you don't do that and just kind of grab something off the, off the internet or something like that, it's a missed opportunity, I think. Okay, so I've got the bitbox running. I've got the uh, samples loaded here. Got the cellos, the guitar, the flutes. And uh, so yeah, they sound pretty cool. They're all playing some variation of the augmented fifth. Now I thought that it was important to add a couple more sounds just to ground the whole thing. So I went ahead and put this uh, sa a synth sample uh, through a Moog filter. I didn't mean for it to sound like a like an Inception bong, but it does. And then a couple of the uh, little little piano little riffs. And so the idea was once I had this loaded it was going to interact with the rest of the modules and of course um, you know bitbox is not a computer so you have to really figure out like what you're trying to do with this workflow and really is a minimalist workflow so while i thought bitbox was in many ways you know sort of limiting and was worried once i started to really get into it I mean, it was so easy to record, chop, edit, and, um, you know, simply just like really fun. And even the, this recording mode, you know, I thought it was going to, well, first, I thought it was going to sound really kind of bad. Uh, but, you know, with the Bifaco inter instrument interface piping into the bitbox, and honestly, the sounds are pretty good. In fact, these guitars, you know, and, and the cellos, they were recorded directly from the instrumental interface, instrument interface from Bifaco into the bitbox. So, sounds pretty darn good. And in all reality, the workflow of being able to kind of go into the sample and like moving things around and pinching and zooming in, uh, it's just kind of liberating and I think anyone who's worked like away from the computer recognizes the the freedom it, it gives you. Another really cool thing is that this entire rig is essentially portable because if you have one of these guys, which is a, a DTAP battery that the camera guys use, uh, this entire rig can be powered by this thing uh, for hours. And so you can have a headphone coming out of there and have hours of just amazing mobile rig. And in fact, in the future, I'll probably do some kind of an episode on that where I just take out this rig and just kind of goof off in the backyard or at a park somewhere or a cafe or something. Super cool. Just like you would take any other standalone production sample rig this could be one of those things, which is quite exciting, I think. Honestly, the idea for this really has to do with the way Bitbox interacts with beats, first of all, because those are sort of the sound sources, right? And so 
really it's about trying to kind of work with beads and see what kind of cool sounds I can get out of it. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Once I sort of like kind of have that bass going and that sample is on a toggle, uh, I try to kind of like, uh, oh, one thing I want to mention that, so beside the, uh, the sample like this one, the uh, Inception Bong, and the, uh, the the piano are being it's a dry signal, but the rest of the samples like the flute and the the guitar and the cello are being piped into into beats and then it's coming out. So that's just you know for you to know the the, the I O of it. So uh, essentially, I kind of have this bass playing in this on toggle this you know minute or so long, and uh, you know I kind of like would play this, and actually I need to put this uh, beats on. Um, seed mode and um, you know just kind of play this and maybe you know I'll freeze it maybe I'll play this and that's kind of cool it's just you know just kind of infinitely play this bow I'll um, unfreeze it, play a little flute. And you know, just trigger whatever. So it, I guess it's sort of a weird performance playing. Sounds a little funny to me, but uh, you know. And I noticed that some of it is slightly out of tune. Uh, I could probably, I probably need to go in there and kind of like tweak the, um, tweak the semitones a little bit, which you can, you can tune it, but I kind of sometimes like things being slightly out of tune, uh, because that way, you know, you are kind of like, you are kind of like, you know, it's, it's organic, it's raw, but yeah, I mean, still, you don't want to be completely out of tune, then it sounds, it sounds bad, but... I like I like the guitars always because you know you can kind of hear that that going on. So I kind of dialed in some of these settings already, so that way you know it's somewhat performance friendly. But I was you know goofing around with like you can goof around with the pitch and stuff, and it sounds kind of weird. Um, again, all I'm doing right now is just kind of like playing these samples and then like sampling it into beats. And then kind of freezing it so that it plays in a way that's kind of interesting. And then yeah, that always sounds cool, you know, having it being a tex texture synthesizer. And then, you know, when you're bored, just play the bong. So, I mean, yeah, it's like, obviously, this is super basic, but, like, once you can develop your textures and sample rates and tempo and begin to add other modules on top of it, um, it could be really interesting. Now, I, again, I'm not, you can do this with, like, you know, beatbox making. I'm more of a, like, a classically trained sort of, like, cinema guy and so I like these check I like these kinds of textures more they're more interesting to me but you know it's kind of cool because I think these were developed for that purpose in mind but you can use it for this too it's just like it's so it's so satisfying you know but you can do a lot of interesting things with it and I love how that bowing it's like forever let me see if I can leave that with the flute let's release it freeze it So, yeah, this was just like random thing that I came up with, seeing if it'll work, and they all kind of sort of correlate. Again, there's no beat. This isn't like sing to anything. Whoa, that was weird. I will get to that though. So,
Okay, so some final thoughts. I think this sampler Eurorack uh, was a big success for me creatively. It kind of gave me everything that I thought it would give me, which is a focused workflow with limited ability, but still there's so much to discover within that limitation. And so I had great fun, lost many hours with it. Unfortunately, as usual, I couldn't get to some of the other modules, but since I have that DTAP battery that allows this entire rig to be portable, I look forward to being able to take this rig and some of the other rigs I have in the backyard, coffee shop or wherever, and just kind of really get lost in it without, you know, getting bombarded with emails or notifications and text messages. You can really focus on the rig and, and, and get with it. A couple of notes of caution, though. You have to remember that with limitations, there are some consequences. For example, like you have to remember to save your presets and there aren't any levels of undo. There's no undo. So if you forget to save your presets, they're gone. So you got to remember that. Also, you know, Bitbox, it's not a computer. I don't know what's in there, but there are definitely times, you know, I pushed it to the limit, kind of like having too many tracks or playing too many sounds at once, or if the volumes were not quite right, it would distort. So I, you know, it's definitely not one of the most robust standalone samplers as I really put it through the rigor. Uh, maybe it has uh, it has a lot to do with the, the SD card because it's definitely reading stuff off the SD card. And so maybe I need to get something smaller or faster, although I think the SD card that I have is quite fast. So I'm going to have to do some more investigation, but there are definitely some, like on the, when I was tracking that, you heard that little beep sound that, that happens when I think Bitbox sort of loses like like the read there's like a read IO where it's trying to read the sample off the SD card uh, maybe there's a new firmware that I could discover but anyway so again with all the fun that comes with limitations there's also the consequence and also yeah literal limitations because it's not a computer so